So you're wondering how to use Active Recall when you're taking notes in Notion. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you three ways that you can implement Active Recall methods into your Notion note-taking routine to help move the information that you're taking down in your notes and move it into your long-term memory. Now, for those of you who don't know, my name's Daniel Langwish, and this channel is focused on increasing value in tech productivity, fitness, and lifestyle. And I've made videos covering Notion as well as other productivity areas. So if that's of interest to you, make sure you click the like button below and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest videos that I'm releasing. And in addition to Active Recall, make sure you stay until the end where I'm gonna give you my secret tip on how to do spaced repetition within Notion, which will permanently solidify that information into your long-term memory. But with that being said, Let's jump into it. Now today we're gonna to take a look at how you can implement active recall methods into your Notion note-taking routine. Now for those of you who don't know, active recall is a method of studying that helps move information from your short-term memory into your long-term memory. And it does this by forcing your brain to actually recall the information. Now a lot of us, when we study for things, we just, you know, we take notes, and then when we study, we read through those notes and read through them over and over until we've learned the information. However, research has found that that's actually a really ineffective way to learn new information because you're not forcing your brain to recall information. When we take tests, as you know, students are very familiar with, you have to recall the information when you see a question. You, it asks you something and your brain has to recall it. So our studying, if we want to actually remember things long-term, should be in a similar structure. Now the key to active recall is framing your notes as questions. So when you're going through your notes, it, it'll instead of just reading the information to you, it'll be a question that your brain then has to try to recall the answer and then you can look and see if you were correct. Now in a study published in Science Magazine by Jeffrey Karpik and Henry Rodiger, they found that students who used active recall remembered new terms that were given to them at an 80% rate compared to 34% of the students who didn't use active recall. So you can see that this method is extremely effective if you're trying to learn and permanently remember new information. And the first main way is through use of toggles. So right here, we just got kind of an example page and let's say you know, you're know uh, you taking notes on the pancreas. And so here I've just got a example paragraph uh, I'm gonna bring over of some potential notes. Let's say, so uh, you got this paragraph of what the pancreas is. Now I could just put that down and memorize that, but in a lot more effective way with active recall would be then to include, and we're gonna go slash and then toggle, let's create a toggle, and then frame it into a question. So, uh, you know, here it says that the pancreas has two main functions, an exocrine function that helps in digestion and an endocrine function that regulates blood sugar. So the question might be, what are the two main functions of the pancreas? And then we go down and up within the toggle, then we can just copy these functions right here. And now, and, we, and actually this doesn't need to be a toggle. And we could even if we wanted, you know, we could uh, maybe bold it so that it stands out a little bit more. But now when you're going through your notes, you'll see every time you see these toggles, uh, instead of just reading information, you can go and get what are the two main functions of the pancreas, and then you have to recall it, and you can click the toggle to check if you were correct. And then another neat thing that you can do is over time to kind of track how you're doing, you can use colors to dictate how well you know a question. So let's say, you know, this one um, I know really well. I could go over here to color and maybe turn it to green. And then that would signify to me I know that one really well, whereas if maybe I'm kind of iffy on it, I put yellow, and if I just have absolutely no idea the answer, I do red. And then when I'm going through my notes, I know what areas to focus on specifically. 
Now that's a really helpful way of doing active recall within notes. However, there are some downsides to it as using toggles is kind of tedious. You know, you have each question uh, is kind of in different locations in your notes and then for each one you have to keep toggle on, toggle off and um, that can be a little, uh, yeah, tedious to work with. So another way that you can do active recall is within tables with your notes. So right here, I'll, uh, let's delete this. And I'm gonna, right here, just create a table. And we'll just say active recall questions. And maybe I'll put this at the top of my notes. And so, you know, down down in this whole area, you're, you have all your notes just going down, going down. And anytime you have a question, you could put it up here. So we might label this question and we would put a similar question. What are the two main functions of the pancreas? And then when you click on it, since it's its own page, you could put the answer right here. Um, and going back, because I don't have everything memorized. Um, here we go. So you could go here, copy that, boom. And again, if you wanted to bold it, you could. But then when you when you click on it, then it would um, show the answer. So that's another way of, you know, you only see the question here, boom, you open up, see the answer. Now the great thing about a table is you have all these other columns that you can use to track information about that question. So one thing you might do is go here and for dictating your confidence in that question, you might put a select here and maybe confidence le level is what you're gonna name it. And you could put a, um, you could say perfect and you're gonna probably wanna color code these to appropriate things. So put that as green. Um, very good maybe, and that might be like a blue, mediocre, and make that into a, a yellow, bad, might be an orange, and Ter and yeah, terrible we'll go with. And put that as a red. So now you really have a great scale of, uh, after each question you can rate how well do you know it. And then what's awesome is you can then go up here in the table and go filter and you could add a filter to filter by the confidence level. So you could filter by ones that are terrible. Or another thing you could do is, uh, let's take that filter off and go over here. You could also sort, you could add a sort and sort by the confidence level. And so then it'll maybe give you all the ones that you don't know very well first and then kind of work its way up. So it's really cool because a table yeah, allows you to give you all these extra options to take those questions and see how you're doing with them. Now, when comparing this to the toggle, it's, you know, it's a kind of different just because the table, you know, all the questions are right together. So you kind of have all your questions right here and then all your notes down below. Whereas the toggle, the questions are right with the paragraph or the notes that you took for it. So it's really just whichever style you feel like works best for your note taking system. And there are probably many other ways that you can implement active recall into Notion. These were just a few ways that I've used and have found beneficial. And if you know of any other ways of doing active recall within Notion that uh, I didn't cover, please drop it down in the comments below. I'd love to hear uh, what you guys have been using and, and learn from you. Now my bonus tip for today is how to include spaced repetition into your active recall questions to help you continue learning and solidifying the information into your long-term memory. Now spaced repetition kind of falls on this premise that 
they found that with information that you learn, there's this kind of drop off curve of you forgetting that information. And the longer, you know, you think about it over time, the longer that you go, the more and more information drops off. So they found that if you can do spaced repetition, spaced sessions of relearning the information, going over the information again, you can disrupt that curve and keep that information in your brain and move it to your long-term memory. And so this might be, you know, a week after you take notes, you read over those notes again, and then three weeks after you read them again, and a month later, you just keep putting periods of disruption into the graph of forgetfulness so that you don't forget things. So in Notion, um, you can kind of do it a few different ways. And they, I found they work with both the toggle method and with tables. So going back down to, let's add another toggle. And you know, what are the two main functions of the pancreas? So let's say after I do this, I know that in uh, a week, I'm gonna want to get this question again. What you can do is you can put the at symbol and then, you know, a week from now, let's say um, next Saturday, and boom, it's created a reminder that is going to pop up with that question next Saturday. So the next Saturday, it's gonna pop up and I'm gonna add see if I remember it and, and relearn it. And then you can, once you go and do it again, you could change the reminder to a couple weeks later. And there's a similar thing in tables. You could do the same thing by just adding a text into tables. Um, another way that isn't necessarily a reminder, but can just, when you're going over the table, see the last time you studied a question, is if you change the uh, column here, change it to last edited time. So that means that's gonna update every time that you change something in that table. And so as long as you have a system where every time you study a question, there's something that you change within the row, um, it could be the, you know, it could be the confidence level or you could, it, an easy way might be just adding a column that's uh, just a number and you could just say times studied. And now when you, so every time you increase the time studied and then it'll update the, and I guess, uh, last studied time would be a good name for that. Then that'll update every time. So then you'll be able to look through and see, okay, what's, which of my questions have I not reviewed recently? And can I go over and study again? And you can combine that with using the at symbol for reminders as well to create a really effective system for spaced repetition and remembering that information. And if you wanna hear more about uh, this spaced repetition concept and how we can use it in Notion, definitely click the subscribe button, click the little bell to get notified um, so that you get notified when I uh, release a video which uh, should be coming up here in the future um, all about spaced repetition and the power of it. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out the rest of my Notion series in the link right above here and it goes through all the different aspects of Notion as we keep plugging away and figuring out how to use this program to become better, more productive people. But until next time,